Common indications for nasogastric intubation include decompression of the GI tract in patients with bowel obstruction and gastric emptying in intubated patients to prevent aspiration. NG tubes may be placed as an adjunct for the delivery of oral agents such as activated charcoal or oral radiographic contrast media. NG tubes are often placed in patients with suspected upper GI hemorrhage. However, the sensitivity and negative predictive value of nasogastric aspirates for detecting active bleeding is suboptimal and the absence of bloody return cannot be relied upon to rule out hemorrhage. Nonetheless, nasogastric intubation may be useful in selected patients. Evacuation of blood and clots from the stomach may facilitate the endoscopic visualization of the gastric and duodenal mucosa and the return of bright red blood does provide prognostic information. Nasogastric intubation and gastric emptying may be beneficial in patients with severe pancreatitis and associated ileus. However, it has been shown that NG tubes are not beneficial and in some cases detrimental in patients with mild or moderate symptoms. Nasogastric intubation should be avoided in patients with significant maxillofacial trauma as the tube may enter the cranial vault if the thin cribiform plate has been disrupted. The procedure should also be avoided in patients with known esophageal abnormalities such as recent caustic ingestion, diverticulae, or strictures as they are at high risk for esophageal perforation. Since nasogastric intubation may induce emesis, patients who are unable to adequately protect their airway should be intubated with a cuffed endotracheal tube if the procedure must be performed. Begin by gathering equipment you will need. This will include gloves, a protective gown, and face shield, an appropriately sized nasogastric tube, vasoconstrictor spray, and a topical anesthetic such as benzocaine or lidocaine solution with an atomizer. Obtain a lubricant, a glass of water with a straw, towels or blue pads, a 60cc catheter tip Tumi syringe, a stethoscope for tube confirmation, tape, and a wall suction setup. Have the patient breathe in through each nostril to assess which side is more patent. Premedicate the nasal cavity with a vasoconstricting spray such as phenylephrine or oxymetazoline. Anesthetize the nasal cavity with a topical anesthetic such as 4% lidocaine or topical lidocaine jelly. The posterior oropharynx should also be anesthetized with lidocaine or topical benzocaine spray. Nebulized lidocaine may also be used. The proper depth of tube insertion is approximated by measuring the distance from the xiphoid process to the angle of the mandible and then to the nostril. Lubricate the distal tip of the nasogastric tube with surgical jelly or viscous lidocaine. Position the patient sitting upright in the sniffing position. Insert the tip of the nasogastric tube into the nasal cavity and slowly advance it posteriorly parallel to the floor of the nasal canal. The tube should not be directed upwards. In this endoscopic view of the nasal cavity, note that if the tube is passed in an upwards fashion, it will reach a blind recess at the middle turbinate. When the tube is passed parallel to the nasal floor, it reaches the posterior nasopharynx without difficulty. Continue to pass the tube posteriorly. The patient may gag once the tube reaches the larynx. Temporarily halt the advancement of the tube and ask the patient to begin swallowing sips of water through a straw. Coordinating advancement of the tube with the swallowing mechanism facilitates passage of the NG tube into the esophagus and prevents entry into the trachea. This is a fluoroscopic view of a nasogastric tube being inserted. As the tube reaches the level of the larynx, advancement is temporarily halted. The tube is then inserted as the patient swallows and, once past the larynx, is rapidly advanced. Note that in this endoscopic view of the larynx, the trachea is frequently open and may be accidentally intubated with an NG tube. Note also that as the patient swallows, the laryngeal apparatus arises and the epiglottis covers the glottis, preventing tracheal entry. Once past the larynx, the tube may be inserted rapidly to the predetermined depth. Check the black markings on the tube to confirm proper depth of insertion. Assure that the patient is in no respiratory distress and is able to speak. 
If the patient is unable to talk, is in respiratory distress, or if respirations can be heard through the tube, it should be removed immediately, as tracheal intubation has likely occurred. Attach the catheter tip syringe to the main port of the NG tube and insufflate 30 cc's of air while auscultating over the epigastrium. A gurgling noise should be clearly audible. Using the same syringe, aspirate the NG tube and ensure that it fills with gastric contents. It should be noted that auscultation and aspiration may occasionally provide false positive results. Therefore, radiographic confirmation of tube placement by visualizing the NG tube's descent below the diaphragm should be obtained prior to infusion of any substance, such as activated charcoal or oral contrast media. The tube should be secured to the patient prior to transport to the radiology suite. Take a 5 to 7 centimeter strip of adhesive tape and tear it vertically for one half of its length. The wide section is placed across the patient's nose and the two tails are then wrapped in opposite directions around the NG tube. You may now connect the nasogastric tube to suction. Turn on the suction and adjust the vacuum force as desired. Minor complications of NG tube insertion include epistaxis, sinusitis, and sore throat. More serious sequelae include esophageal perforation, pneumothorax, aspiration, and rarely, intracranial placement.